first I would like to thank uh, the organizers of the conference and Michael in specifically for having me here uh, to present you our project uh, within the CRC uh, scales of transformations. Our project is dealing with the transition from the Calcutta Pic to the Bronze Age, currently in its first phase uh, within the Southern Iberian Peninsula. And we're investigating the influence of the well-known 4.2 event on this transition. The whole thing is uh, embedded in the uh, CRC skills of transformations that in general investigates transformations of uh, societies and their triggers and components. And our project is a close cooperation between paleoclimatology and archaeology. The paleoclimatologists will investigate the local climate signal while the archaeology, primarily me, will investigate within the area uh, there where the paleoclimatologists can predict, post-dict the, the climate change, uh, what is going on in the archaeology. And then we would like to come up with some quantitative proxies to compare these to come uh, identify if there is a causality of the climate on the social change or not. And as I said, we currently start with two uh, working areas in the southern, southwestern uh, Iberian Peninsula. And I will focus today mainly on uh, southern Portugal here. Transformations during that time uh, that we can observe are uh, transformations of the architecture, be it domestic or funeral architecture, ritual architecture. We can see uh, differences in the symbolic expression of people. We can see, of course, differences in the uh, material culture regarding the tools of weaponry, their material, but also their shape and forms, uh, and also a lot of other um, transformations, changes within the material culture that I can't name here. How, uh, how do we tackle this from the archaeological perspective? We collect a lot of data for uh, primary settlement sites and can see a list, uh, not an uh, exclusive list here, what we are collecting and we want to transfer these uh, variables when they are quantified into time series to make them comparable with uh, the paleoclimatological record and in a 4D GIS to uh, make this spatial also. And uh, what we're currently doing, the uh, project is in its first year. Uh, we investigate in changes in material culture, what I can't show you now because lack of time. I will concentrate on the demography uh, part of our project. Um, and I would like to start with uh, results from an heuristic analysis. I can't go into detail here what heuristic analysis is doing. Essentially, it is uh, counting numbers of sites per time slice, uh, having uh, the sites dated with a duration beginning and end. And the basis of uh, my uh, um, analysis here are sites from our working area. We have there 4,084 sites of Neolithic, Calculative or and or Bronze Age uh, um, date. And I select the settlement sites. This will be a repeated uh, pattern because I think the settlement sites reflect at best the uh, demographic development and are most comparable between those two uh, um, phases. And what we can see here is counting the number of sites per time slice, that we have some kind of plateau during the Neolithic going on, then a boom during the Calcolithic with a lot more sites and then really a tremendous decline of settlement activities in the archaeological record in our working area towards the Bronze Age, which coincides with the 4.2 event. So there is kind of indication going on here that there is something happening. But as you see, the temporary resolution is very, very coarse because we are limited currently to uh, these broad time intervals. We will go to the individual sites and make the uh, duration uh, smaller at each individual site, but this takes a lot of time and work. Um, you can also map um, the, these sites according to the uh, phases and what you can see here is uh, that we have in the Neolithic two um, clusters of settlement that are still uh, visible within the Calcolithic, even uh, more pronounced, uh, the uh, situation here is more dense, while these areas are um, sparsely uh, this, um, settled. While in the Bronze Age we have a totally different picture, uh, these areas uh, fall apart and we have a 
very uh, not so dense uh, but very spread uh, occupation of the landscape. Um, to accompany this and to get more uh, internal structure, uh, we use also sum calibration as a tool. And this is a short advertising block. We have uh, produced a um, toolbox for the statistical package R that you can download from our GitHub site. Also a toolbox for doing heuristic analysis here. And we would be happy if you find use for this. Um, if we would concentrate our uh, investigation of the, of the C40 data only to our research area, we would have much too few data. We have there currently for our uh, time slice, the, the university time slice, only uh, 26 sites with a total of 79 dates. And with this, you can't make any interpretations. Um, this is also a repeating picture. What you can see here, this gray area marks uh, the uh, confidence interval of random processes. And only if the underlying curve leaves this gray area, then we have a significant uh, sign, a significant signal that there is probably something going on in the demography. So we have too few dates in our working area currently. So we extend the focus and take the whole uh, Iberian Peninsula into focus. And uh, here is the resulting sum calibration. You can see uh, for the whole Iberian Peninsula a more or less similar picture that we have seen from the heuristic within the uh, working area. But it, there are some differences. The Neolithic is not so well represented here. The Calcolithic boom is more pronounced. And the uh, drop towards the Bronze Age is not so pronounced. But you have see here this tiny little guy. And this is uh, very much fitting towards the 4.2 event. So this gives us some indication that uh, probably go is going something on. But what about significance? If we take all the dates and look if they uh, go out of the uh, random process, and we can see that this uh, plateau of the Calcolithic and also some things that take place in the Bronze Age are significant. And if we take this here as null hypothesis, saying here is nothing going on uh, with these dates, then we can see um, that this, this spike, uh, this drop in the curve is also significant. So here is something significant going on that is different from all the rest of the date distribution here. Uh, this drop, uh, this de population decline might be something real. Um, having talked about climate, uh, my colleague uh, Julian Schirmacher is investigating uh, the climatological uh, um, yeah, uh, situation and he is doing uh, um, investigations on a marine cores to identify uh, the climate signal as local as we can go. Um, I can't go in also into details here, but uh, the signal comes from the rivers that flow into the, uh, in the ocean, and we get uh, a climate signal from the um, surrounding river areas. And what we can see from his first analysis is that we have a prolonged 4.2 event here with two dry episodes divided by a more wet episode. Um, and if we project his climate curve onto our uh, demographic curve from the sun calibration, we can see that in the beginning there is quite a good correlation between the blue climate curve and the black uh, demographic curve. Uh, for the first dry <coughs> period, later on for the second dry period, there's not so much correlation going on. You could interpret this as the societies have developed uh, strategies to cope with drier situations. But this is something that we have to investigate in the next three years of our project. Um, usually, probably projects would stop here, saying there is a correlation going on between climate and uh, population. But we want to go further and really have uh, causality. With the in the rest of the presentation, oh well, I'm fast. Um, I would shortly uh, guide you through the uh, settlement development on the Iberian Peninsula as we can infer it uh, from the C14 dates. And what you will see here is we have a map, uh, and uh, you will see now kind of a movie. Um, the m points representing settlement sites, the darker the points are, the more likely they are according to the C14 dates. And here's also a red shading. The redder it is, the more dense is the area occupied. And down below here, you can see the time slice uh, and the, um, the uh, sum calibration, the results of the sum calibration. And if we move forward in time, you can see two uh, with the beginning of this calcolithic uh, 
boom phase, um, you can see that there's a denser occupation going on here, and this repeats and uh, stays that way. And then we have the calcolytic plano where it intensifies even more. And then we come towards uh, the final calcolytic and the bronze age. And you can see, especially in our working area here, uh, the settlement density is uh, very, very low during that time. But what evolves here in the eastern uh, uh, Iberic Peninsula is a different um, settlement core, a different uh, core of settlement activities that uh, is even more pronounced if we go further through the Bronze Age. So here we can see that it evolves very, very clear. Okay. Oops. Um, my summary, uh, we still need to collect more data, especially on different uh, indicators to come up really with um, multi-proxy uh, analysis to identify causality here. And for this, we also need a much finer temporary resolution. This is a work in progress, both for the climatolo climatological record as well as for the archaeological record. Currently, there are good indications that there is a correlation between population development and uh, climate as, uh, as it regards precipitation. Um, but this has to be checked further. Uh, and already now, systematic large-scale evaluation makes shifts in the settlement foci on the Iberian Peninsula very plausible. Uh, what is also a takeaway for me uh, from our first result is that we have to investigate the individual uh, regions individually because there are step very different uh, trajectories going on in the individual regions. If we would take only the uh, whole um, Iberian Peninsula as it is, then we would come to very wrong uh, results. So we have to investigate every region individually. Thank you for your attention.